Hello again, partners. We are at report number 69. And we're going to return to the Revolutionary War and spotlight the exploits of a man who was a very unlikely patriot. First of all, he was chubby. <laughs> well, partners, without being rude, maybe I should truthfully say he was fat. <laughs> His name was Henry Knox. Today he's much loved by historians. Knox was born in Boston, the city that became the nerve center for patriotism as the Revolutionary War approached. As a young lad, he was famous all over Boston, but not for a good reason. You see, young Henry Knox, despite his being chubby and awkward, was known as the best street fighter in the Massachusetts capital city. Street fighter! He wandered from job to job, but finally bought a small bookstore in downtown Boston. But wait till you hear this. In that bookstore, Henry Knox read every book that had anything to do with military history. This Ronnery, Henry Knox, became a self-taught military expert. In 1775, Knox was told that the big man himself, George Washington, had come to Boston. Hey, wait just a minute. George Washington? Henry Knox made sure he met him. And after only five minutes, Washington was so impressed with this roly-poly bookstore owner, asked Knox to take on a most important project. What we need here in Boston are big guns, Washington told Knox. Please go to Fort Ticonderoga and get them. Well, it was hard for Henry Knox to keep from laughing. Fort Ticonderoga was about 300 miles north of Boston in the mountains of New York, knee-deep in snow. But Knox accepted the assignment. Now, in a stroke of genius, Knox made huge sleds. He mounted the guns on those sleds and safely drug them to Boston. Can you imagine that? What imagination! During the Revolutionary War, Knox climbed through the ranks of the Continental Army and was with George Washington at many major battles, giving him advice based on the books that he had read in his own store. Henry Knox set up training centers for artillerymen and manufacturing facilities for weapons. Okay, let's fast forward now. When America got her freedom from the British, George Washington was elected president of our new government, as you know, and the nation's first cabinet members had Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and Henry Knox as three of those members. Knox was the first Secretary of War. Today that post is called the Secretary of Defense. And so the roly-poly street fighter from Boston had proven that anyone can become a patriot and help make a difference. Tragically, partners, the life of Henry Knox has a sad ending. He and his wife Lucy had 13 children, but only one lived to adulthood. But listen to this. In 1806, he was enjoying a meal at his favorite restaurant, and Knox swallowed a small piece of chicken bone. It was caught in his throat and then down into his stomach, causing an infection, bringing about his death three days later at only 56. His contributions to the nation were incredible. Cities named Knox are in Maine, Indiana, Iowa, Iowa, Illinois, Maryland, and Tennessee. Many states have a Knox County. In fact, Knox County in Indiana used to cover most of the old Northwest Territory. Yes, partners, the roly-poly patriot is long gone, but his good works and patriotism live on. Henry Knox. Okay, partners, you know the drill. Look up there at the right and see those three favorite boxes of ours. And the one at the far right has the big red X, and that's the last one. 
So just click that one. Don't click anything else, and you'll magically return to the report page for this week's comments, the rest of them. Dennis, revisiting the roly-poly patron has brought new thoughts we missed the first time. Thanks for digging through the archives. Hey, I love telling these stories to you on video. It means so much, and your feedback to me it gives me great hopes for the future. <laughs> hey, I love you. Go get them, tigers! Grrrr. <sniffs>